Welcome to Always Moving Forward with Renee. Moving, moving forward. Happy day to all. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Always Moving Forward with Renee and Friends. I am Renee, and my friends are Noni, Lenore, and Jackie. But you know, as always, we've got to start off with paying the bills. Our sponsor, United Success Network. Let me ask you a question. Do you feel like you need a little help financially as for the mortgage, the car payment, are you drowning in bills? Are you ducking the bill collectors? <laughs> Whatever your needs are, United Success Network can help you. Call them at 313-282-4455. Tell them you heard it on Always Moving Forward with Renee and Friends. And we can't forget Mr. Antoine Bell. He makes it possible for us to be with you each and every week. If you need prayer, want to let us know that you just watch the show, you have suggestions for us, call or text us at 313-657-5556. Or you can email us at G W E A L. THS111 at gmail.com. 1 Timothy 5th chapter 8th verse states, But if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith. Remember, he has denied the faith. Viewers, I hope you are ready today, ready with paper and pen, because you will want to take notes. We don't want you to miss anything which you're going to hear today. In the past, we've discussed taking risks, procrastinating, faith, fear, credit repair. We've had a number of topics as well as guest speakers. But today we have a special guest, a special guest, a friend of mine, a friend of our friend, yes. Mr. Cedric Robinson, financial advisor. Cedric has been practicing insurance, wealth building, and retirement planning, excuse me, retirement planning strategies for over 40 years. Over 40 years. That, you're right, that is a long time. That's about my age, 40. <laughs> <laughs> what Cedric is going to share with us today is going to prepare, prepare us for tomorrow. And that's what we want to be ready for, am I right? That's yes. right. Legacy planning in the black community. Yes. Now, we want everyone, everyone who is watching or if you're listening to take notes because you want to be prepared. Mm -hmm. That's real important. We're here today, again, talking with Cedric. Cedric has been practicing insurance, like I said, and wealth building, and he's been in the business for 40 years, over 40 years. But Cedric, tell me, over the past 40 years, what have you found to be people's bis biggest, biggest obstacle to creating wealth? Well, <coughs> thank you, thank you, Renee. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, I was only two years old when I started practicing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. 
<laughs> no, so, you're so saying not the child that old. <laughs> Uh, yes, um, I appreciate that wonderful introduction. Uh, what I want to do in terms of answering your question is I want to tell you that um, what I have found, and I've been in thousands of homes over the years, um, doing uh, everything from mortgages, insurance, uh, and I, was a, I was a stockbroker until uh, 2008 when uh, a lot of people start losing money. And so I decided then that I was gonna get out of that because a lot of my clients had gotten older and I just wanted them to be safe. And what I found over the last 40 years was this. People never amass any wealth because they never get started. They, they just needed a plan. Yeah. And you know, the Social Security Administration did a survey and they found out that uh, it was based on the average individual that started out working. And it was based on the fact that people that start out working, and they would make, like a secretary or somebody making 25000 they would make over a million dollars during their working years from 25 to 65. People with special training, uh, such as school teachers, a professional engineer, they would make over $3 million. Now, can you imagine that? $3 million, but here's what they found. <laughs> they found out that these people that made all this money in the richest country of, in the world, mm -hmm. they didn't save anything. Yeah. They found out there was only five people. One of them was rich, four had an income, and 29 of them were dead. And that's kind of the mortality. Mm -hmm. uh, one third of the people that start out will die between 25. And this is why they need to have insurance. You never know who it's going to be, but at least one third of them would die. But they found out that these people, uh, 63 of them were dependent on friends, relatives, and social security. And so in my years, I just got tired of going to churches. They taken up what's called go fund accounts. They, nobody never had any money. Yeah. And, and I was wondering, why, why is that? And they made $3 million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what I did is I created a, a format called FLIP. And this was done uh, back in 2010. And I got it trademarked with the federal government. And FLIP is uh, called FLIPP, is for Family Legacy Insured Pension Plan. Mm -hmm. And this is a program that any family, this is all they would ever need. And so I will tell you some of the things about FLIP that you might want to know. It does everything for you, and it's through the insurance companies. It's a safe investment. It allows you to save money, and you can start off with as little as $10 a week. Uh, and you can save as much as you want to. There's no IRS interference because there's never no taxes on it. You can build up wealth, no taxes. And this is one of the problems that people didn't create wealth because of the taxes. You see, um, there's nothing wrong with 401ks because people match their the income, but then when they match that, the government takes a third back. Uh, you can have a hundred thousand dollars in a 401k or a pension plan, and I, and sometimes people come to me and I ask them, I say, what? Are you? Well, how much money do you have? And they say 100000 And I say, well, how much is your partner going to get? And that's the government. Mm -hmm. So this is um, uh, kind of the reason that they don't create wealth. They don't start. They amass money. Then they have taxes. Then they lose money because of the stock market uh, that goes down. And there's nobody to manage the money for them. And then, the, <coughs> lastly, for older people, they have a problem with long-term care. Uh, with that, somebody gets sick and they use all the money to try to take care of them. So there's a number of things that are the reason why people never amass. But I've discovered all of this and I have a solution for all of these reasons that people never amass wealth. And this is what I've found over the last 40 years. Thank you. All right, I think he really answered that question. Yes, I think he did. Yes, ma'am. 
Cedric, I have a question for you. Uh -huh. um, there's a lot of concern about the wealth gap faced by minorities. As a financial advisor, how do you address and help people overcome those challenges? Well, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that uh, because, um, a, as you know, uh, one of our uh, most audious uh, singers has recently passed. Yeah. And that was an article. And uh, I have this article, and I'll uh, share this with you. When this article, they talked about uh, Queen of Soul and the money that she had amassed. $80 million. Mm -hmm. And in this article, it also said that she didn't have a will, mm -hmm. she didn't have a trust, and there are some other things that she needed, uh, special need trust, but the important thing is that, and what caught me with this article, and you guys can read it yourself, mm -hmm. uh, she's going to lose half of it. Oh, yes. Half wow. of it. Now, she could have avoided that $40 million she's going to lose. All she had to do was to set up a special type of trust. And, and because, see, any money is over $5 million, the government want to take the state taxes out of it. Mm -hmm. And then that runs anywhere about 35%. And then there's income taxes. So that's how she's going to lose it. Um, she could have set up a special estate plan which would allow an insurance policy to pay all of the money that the government wanted and her family could have enjoyed the uh, $80 million. Right. Or she could have left some to foundations. And part of, just think what $20 million would have done, putting it into a scholarship uh, and, yes, and then yes. everybody, every kid in the high school in Detroit, yes. uh, every year they could have gotten a scholarship to go to school using that 20 million. Just off the interest of it, that could have gone into perpetuity. So that's where the legacy part is coming in. We don't really think about that. But in directly answering your question that you asked, uh, what we found is that in 2009, uh, there was a gap between minorities and the other, and whites. Um, the, the minorities uh, average was about $9,000. Whites was 113000 at age 65. That wow. was the gap. Wow. Today, uh, this is 2000 and about 10 years later, uh, you'd be surprised with that. We have made improvements, but that gap now is $100,000 that blacks have mm -hmm. and whites have over half a million dollars. So that gap is widening. And so uh, we're doing okay, we're doing better, but that gap is widening. And the reason for that, and there's about three reasons. 40% of that reason that that gap is right is, uh, is there is because of real estate. You see, when a, a white child gets out of school mm -hmm. and their parents go and help them get a house, they don't have any furniture, mm -hmm. and they're partying in it. Right, but they right. get a house in a good neighborhood, mm -hmm. and that house value grows. So when that kid gets ready at 30, gets ready to get married, then he already owns a house. Right. And yes. so he can rent that house out and then buy another house, and then he has that income. Mm -hmm. And then the real estate gives him the tax breaks. Uh, the other area is education. Well, it's known that the more education you have, the better your uh, income will be. And that was a percentage of it. A big percentage came from the lack of investment advice. Mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't a whole lot, but one of the biggest things came from the fact that um, we just didn't have jobs. Okay. And uh, the, the jobs that we had, we were first to get laid off. And so when we did that, we had to go in and use that 401k that we had and then um, somebody, uh, tires needed to be put on the car, and we, uh, we had to use the money to do that. And I, I want to say this, and if you don't get anything else out of this, it's just this. When you have money and you save up money, you should never, ever 
take that money and give it to anyone. Because when you do that, you lose the investment opportunity of that money for the future. Mm -hmm. As an example, um, we have a lot of we have a lot of people, young people. They go out and buy a car. Cars is gonna and they put thirty thousand dollars on a car. So what do they do? They finance it. Mm -hmm. So by the time they finish with that car, they have they on the wrong side of interest. You know, they finance it, and then they they pay over fifty thousand dollars for that car. Then what do they do? They go buy another. So for all their life, they're on the wrong side of interest. What if a person, and like in this flip plan that I uh, that I have, what if they could just save up some money, and they take the thirty thousand, and then they go pay cash for their car? And then they pay it back into the account that they took the money from. But they're paying themselves back interest. So now they're on the right side of interest. Okay. Wow. See? And so that's, that's the reason. Now the other problem with that taking, saving 30000 in the bank, what if you take the 30000 out of the bank, and then you take that money and you give it to someone? And let's say you're 30 years old. That person takes the 30000 and they put it in an investment, and then they make, by the time you reach 65, that money is worth $102,000. So what you did was gave up your investment opportunities on that money. At 30000 for that car, you gave up the opportunity to have a hundred and some thousand dollars when you reach retirement. Now you keep doing it, because when you get 36, you do it again. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the problem there. So, so uh, that's really why we have created less wealth. And I want, I want to read you something that uh, Dr. King said. Dr. King said, if our economic system is to survive, mm -hmm. there has to be a better distribution of wealth. Yes. We can't have a system where some people live in superfluous, inordinate wealth, while others live in abject, deadened poverty. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, that's that's really uh, what I what I want to say about that. Right, right. Okay, um, that's very interesting. Yes. Um, since you mentioned your your flip program, on um, you have the special program. What can you tell us about it, and what are some of the benefits that are provided under the program? Well, I can tell you this, and and uh, if I can uh, hold my breath long enough, in <laughs> one breath. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a plan called Family Legacy Insured Pension Plan. Okay. You can start it out, put whatever you want into it. The money builds up tax-free. You can use it whenever you need it, but you, you, when you use the money, it doesn't come out of your account. Your account always stay intact. The insurance company will lend you the money to put uh, tires on your car. It will lend you the money to uh, take a vacation. It will lend you the money to send your kids to school while your money is staying in the account. It never comes out. Now you have to pay that loan back, but you know when you pay that loan back? <coughs> when you die. Wow. The insurance company, because it has a legacy benefit tied to it, okay. and so when you die, the insurance company will take your, that loan out of your legacy benefit, and then they will pay themselves back, but you're left with all the interest that that money generated over the years. It also has a, a benefit in it for, let's say you become disabled and you need long-term care because that's the problem yes. that seniors have. Yes. That's the problem all of us have, long-term care. And when you have a need for that, somebody got to take care of you. Yes. Either yes. you don't have any money and Medicaid does it, or if you have money, then you have to take care of yourself mm -hmm. until you spend it down to $2,000. Right. Well, this plan has a provision in it so that it will pay for five years a check to someone to take care of you. Uh -huh. Then, after it does that, now take it, take this. Your money still is building up in your account. You're using part of the death benefit that's uh, provided with this legacy program. And then, 
once you die, that money can go to your families tax-free. All the money that you took out, there's never any income taxes. And if you want to look that up, that's because of the IRS regulation 7702 of the Internal Revenue Code that allows an insurance company to uh, allow a person to save money and then they can borrow it out and never pay taxes on it and they don't have to pay it back until they die. And it wow. comes out of the death benefit. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Yes, it's a lot of information. And, yes. and, and last year, you know, what, you know what the return was on this? It's a safe account. The return on it last year was 21%, mm. tax-free. I had one client had 300000 in there. He, he made $66,000 of interest. He took it out and didn't have to pay any taxes on it. Mm. Now, uh, I used to do the educators uh, for years. Uh, when there were 250 schools in Detroit, now there's 80. And I don't go there a lot now because all the young people don't know me. They call me old man. <laughs> but, but, I, but what happened is all of these older people now, these were clients of, my, of mine, and they have money and they come in and they said, at seven and a half, they got to take it out. So that's the IRS red, uh, requirement. It's called RMDs. Um, minimum distribution. You got to take the monies out starting at seven and a half. Mm -hmm. So now when they take it out, they got to pay income taxes on it. Mm -hmm. So all the money that they have built up over the years, now they got to pay taxes on it. Yeah. This is what FLIP does. When you put it in and then you get ready to take it out of retirement, you don't have to pay no income taxes on it. Now when you pay income taxes on this money that you take out of your tax sheltered account, or your IRA or 401k, mm -hmm. you have it, it's added to your income, right. it's added to your pension, mm -hmm. and in many cases it makes your, your, adjusted, uh, your adjusted gross income go up so that you end up paying tax, more taxes on your Social Security. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, you have a question. No. Yeah, uh, when is the best time for people to start preparing for retirement and what steps should they take to ensure a healthy financial outlook? Well, and as I was mentioning to someone earlier, the time to start is as soon as you can. What many of the uh, other ethnic groups do, when that child is born, mm -hmm. they set up a little program and they put $2,000 in it. And do you know that uh, putting two thousand dollars when that child gets to retirement, you know how much money they got? Half a million dollars. Wow! Wow! Now you can start any time, yes, but but when a person gets a job, my my uh, my my grandchild, she's just twenty one. She's going to graduate this year, but she got a job, so she came in and said, "Granddad, I want one of those flip plans." So she's putting a hundred dollars in it, twenty-five dollars a week. She say, "I can afford that." When she gets to be sixty-five, she'll have, she'll put in, invest fifty-eight thousand, but she'll have over three hundred and fifty thousand dollars that will give her a tax-free income of three hundred thousand dollars. And while she's going up, she can buy her own car and put the money back in. You can actually buy real estate, and then uh, I have some clients take money out. They buy real estate. And they take the investment from the real estate, uh, the, they rent it out, they take the income and put it back into the plan, they pay themselves back. Then they can buy another one like that. All right. So, so Cedric, uh, uh -huh. I'm interested, okay? So how can people contact you for additional information or to request a consultation? Well, um, my website is called Smart investmentadvisors.com. The phone number is 248-809-6226. But if you can't think of all of that, I spell my name Cedric, S-E-D-R-I-C-K. Just go to Google and put Cedric the Entrepreneur and then I'll come up. S-E-D-R-I-C-K, Cedric the Entrepreneur. But Cedric, repeat that telephone number one more time because I did ask everyone to run and get some paper and yes. okay. repeat that phone number. Uh, the number is 248-809-6226.
248-809-6226. And uh, they can text me at 313-617-6071. Okay. Okay, Jackie, you got another question? What? You know, I know we was, you was talking about all the things that come up that people have to take money out. Okay, and one of the things I found with our government is insurance. Okay. Insurance, high insurance on the car, swooped up, high insurance on the home. So, you know, when you're talking about those things that come in, DTE or, I mean, your electrical bills go up. You know, everything starts going up just when you, when you, Seem like you sell it, then it's something that comes that you don't have any control over. So, how do you adjust? How do people should people adjust? To well, it's really it's really a mindset because, and and I want to show you how people adjust to mindsets. You can be working a uh, a job, and then all of a sudden, they put you on part time. You learn to adjust. All of a sudden, you get laid off for three months. You learn to adjust. So it's just a mindset. When you have money, set aside 10% of whatever you make and set it aside with the understanding that you're never going to touch it. Now, if, you, if you've been in your plan for a few years, you can always go and use that plan, as I was telling you about. You can use that plan for uh, emergencies that you have. It's like having your own bank. Okay. No, you know, uh, Cedric, we want to thank you for coming. And, you know, when it's so good, we, we just run out of time. But audience, viewers, creating a plan can seem like a daunting task, especially if you are young and in good health. But you need to create that plan. Having a well-rounded plan can help your family stay afloat after you know something might happen yes. so i just want to say we're almost out of time so until next week please remember to always keep moving forward and god loves you and so do we so until next week Enjoy Always Moving Forward with Renee. This is your girl Vicky Winans and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves and you're watching Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine, AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times. And you are watching Bell Global Network.